Hey guys and welcome. Today's video is going to be my shave gear of the year for 2017. So it's currently March of 2018 and usually in January of every new year, I just haven't had the time over the last two months so I'm getting to it now, I like to announce my shave gear of the year from the previous year. So this will be for 2017. These are some of my favorite new products that I've used that have really become go-to shaving gear for me over the last year that I just want to share with you guys that I fully recommend. So in today's video, I'm going to do some hardware, you know, uh, razor, blade, shaving brushes, and then get into some of the software, shaving soaps, and aftershaves. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So my safety razor of the year for 2017, this was an easy decision, is the Rockwell 6C. So Rockwell came out with a 6S um, a year or two ago, which is a stainless steel version of this, and that retailed for $100, which was great. It was a stainless steel construction, beautiful, beautiful razor, shaved excellently, but this last year I think that they came out with something even better, a chrome version of that, and this, the 6C version, is only $50, which is something that I love, and uh, the price point is great, but it's really the performance that stands out. Uh, for this razor for me. So as I mentioned, it's all chrome and the 6C here comes in two different versions of chrome, a lighter and a darker chrome. I have the lighter version here and it comes with three base plates. I have one on here and here are the uh, other two. And each base plate, when you put it on there, you can put it this way or upside down. And each way you put these three base plates, whatever side's up, there's six different settings of aggressiveness you can give to that razor, one through six. Six is the most aggressive and one gives you the most mild shave. I've really found out that for me, number three and four seem to be my favorite. Now, sometimes I throw in a one if I'm just looking for a light shave and sometimes a six. If I have a couple days of growth and I just want to get through it, I go straight to that six blade. But aside from that adjustability, which I really do like, it's the overall performance and handling of this razor that stands out for me. It has a great handle on here with excellent grip. Uh, it's a little bit longer than uh, like the Mercor 34C, but I do like that extra length. It seems to handle well. It's got a good uh, diameter here to the handle. And really, when you shave with this thing, the first time I used it, I felt like it was my, like, my favorite razor that I've been shaving with for years. Like the 34C, when I pick up that razor, you guys know the 34C is my all-time favorite razor. When I pick that razor up, it just handles well for me. I know what I'm getting myself into. I know it's where it behaves a little like funny. You know, every razor has like certain angles where it just, you know, you can be a little more careful. And this one from the first shave, I felt like I just knew how to use this. It just felt so natural and it gives me great shaves time in, time out again. It's just, it's just amazing. I don't, I don't really know what else to say about this. The Rockwell 6C is a fantastic razor and it gets my full support as a safety razor of the year for 2017. All right, so to partner with safety razor, next I'm gonna to go to razor blades. And my razor blade of the year for 2017 goes to feather blades. So these come to us from Japan and these are easily the sharpest blades on the market. Some people don't like them because they feel like due to the sharpness of these blades that they can be a little bit rough. I haven't found that to be true for my skin and my beard. I think that they're just incredibly sharp. Do I shave with these every day? No. There's a lot of different razors I use or razor blades I use depending on what type of shave I'm going for. If I'm looking for that close shave with the sharpest razor blade that I can use, this is my go-to blade. I love these blades. They're very, very consistent. Um, you know, their manufacturing processes have very tight limits. Uh, so I feel like you always get a consistent blade from them. and the sharpness on there is just incredible. If you haven't used these, I do recommend it. Give them a try. You might love them, you might hate them, but I feel like more people love them out there than hate them. They are a little bit uh, controversial out there in the wet shaving world, but the feather blades for me are fantastic. I think it might be one of the, it's, well, it's absolutely one of the best blades out there. And in terms of a sharp blade, this has got to be the best one. So my uh, safety razor blade of the year goes to feather. All right, so let's go ahead and get into brushes. There's gonna be three different brushes here. A badger hair brush, a boar hair brush, and a synthetic. So my first brush of the year, I'm gonna start with the badger, is the Razor Rock. Uh, I can't remember the exact name they use for this one. It's changed a little bit, but you'll see it there on their site. This is a silver tip badger hair brush. They, they called this Stubby for a while, and I think that might be the name that they're still going by. This is an incredible silver tip badger hair brush. 
that you get for them, the price is usually $59 or $69.99, so $60 or $70. Bucks. And I believe that this competes out there with easily with brushes that are double its price range. Just a fantastic value at $60 or $70. Like I mentioned, it's a silver tip knot in here, incredibly soft tips, and it's actually very well packed. It has a good amount of backbone. Sometimes with uh, certain brushes, you know, no certain specifications, but you get it, and the knot is just not very dense with hairs in there. It gets very, very floppy, and I have not found that to be true. It's a very well balanced brush. It's not as tightly packed as like the Simpson Chubby, but that one might be on the more excessive side of uh, packing in there. Uh, and some people don't like how excessively packed the Chubby brush is, but this one's very, very nice. There's a lot of hair in there. It gives you good backbone, incredibly soft. It's a 27 and a half millimeter or diameter knot in here, but only has a uh, 50 millimeter height. So with that shortened height with a wider knot in there, it also adds to the backbone. This thing handles great, and the uh, the grip on here is also amazing. I really like this narrower area as it fits into like my little shaving stand I use here. You know, with some of these bigger knots, you have to kind of like wedge them in here right by the knot, but for this one, it just fits right in there nice and easy, it looks great. It's a small detail, but something I definitely appreciate. And with this recessed area on the grip, it just, I don't know, it just feels really good to shave with it. You know, you can grab it in here if you want a smaller diameter, you can grab it out here if you're looking for something bigger, and it's just a pleasure to use. Every time I use this, I'm always impressed, nice and soft, and it's a great value. I often recommend this to my friends who are looking for you know, the next step up, they want to get a nice badger hair brush, but don't want to go spend $150, $200. I think this is a great first higher end badger hair brush. All right, bore brush of the year goes to the Samogue 620. So I've had this brush for a while. Um, in bore hair brushes, I used to prefer undyed hair. So there's this, there was this old uh, kind of trend going on where people would dye boar hair, like this one, to look like badger. You can see here, next to the badger hair brush, it has that same look. You know, you see a three bands in there, lighter, darker, lighter again. Um, so that kind of turned me off. I think badger, or boar hair is beautiful by itself and doesn't need to be dyed, but something in the way that they process the hair to add this dye in here just softens this thing up and just makes these hairs incredible. So it's a 21 millimeter knot, so it is a smaller shaving brush, but only has a 50 millimeter height. So this is balanced like a, like a 24 millimeter um, knot in here, but just scaled down to size. It's really nice. I, I've started to like smaller brushes. I think they just give me a little bit tighter control. You're never going to run out of lather. You know, you only do three, four passes, and this holds plenty of lather to get you through all the passes of your shave. There's always extra lather left in the brush. It just has a really nice face feel to it. With that extra processing that Samogue does when they dye these, it just makes these tips a lot softer. It feels great on your face, uh, and it also has the backbone. Uh, they, they make the bigger brother to this is the Samogue 830. So they have the 830 and the 620. This is the 620, the smaller size of the uh, 830. And this one just, uh, I don't know, it handles nice. It's a great little travel brush. You know, it's not big at all. You can see it there in my hand, and it's uh, it just handles great. You know, if I'm just looking for a quick shave, you know, get this thing nice and hydrated, load it up, and get going, and just it always feels great on my face. It's a fantastic deal. You get it for eighteen to twenty-two dollars, depending on where you buy it from. And it handles great. It's well made. It has this acrylic handle, which is really high quality. It's uh, you know, it's not often Omega uses uh, plastic handles, but it's an acrylic. Just got a little more solid feel to it, which I really do appreciate, and it's beautiful. I like the uh, the, the black in there. I think it looks really slick here, and uh, I always enjoy using this. This is my Badger Hair Brush of the Year for 2017. And finally, synthetic hair brushes. So I've been getting more and more into synthetic hair brushes. When synthetic shaving brushes first came out, I feel like the companies were still working out all the kinks. You know, some of them were incredibly floppy and soft, some were just stiff and rigid and not soft on your face, but I feel like they've worked out all the science behind the synthetic hairs and able to come up with just fantastic products that are a pleasure to use. So my synthetic shaving hair brush of the year goes to the Sterling Little Brother. Uh, this is the 22 millimeter knot. 
So this is synthetic hair. So on your face, I mean, even the softest badger hair brush doesn't feel like this. It, it's just like a, a cloud on your face. I mean, if you don't have a synthetic shaving brush, you should get one and try it out. I was very hesitant for a while. I definitely considered myself a natural hair uh, shaving brush user. But you know, I'm going more and more synthetic nowadays due to the quality. First of all, like I said, so soft. It feels great with lather on there when you're putting it on your face. It, it feels incredible. And they've worked out the backbone in these. They're able to be soft but still have a good amount of play in here and you're still able to like work up a lather on your face. It just it feels like a natural hairbrush. It's the splay is like a natural hairbrush and I don't know, it just these handle great. So it's a 22 millimeter knot, 51 millimeter knot height, and it, this is fantastic. This is another great uh, travel brush. Uh, synthetic brushes might be a little more advantageous to carry with you when you travel just because you don't have to worry about drying them out. You know, synthetic hair brushes, you can kind of abuse them a little bit. You know, I'm done shaving, I just dry it out here on a towel and can throw it in my bag. And, you know, I don't really worry about it. You have to make sure with natural hair brushes that you give them time to dry out, but these you can just go. And Sterling makes a fantastic one. Great little classic style black handle on there. It says Sterling Soap Company. Feels great, handles great. Absolutely recommend the little brother from Sterling. All right, let's get into my shaving soaps of the year. So there's two different shaving soaps I'm gonna highlight. The first one is an artisan soap, and the second one is a bigger, more manufactured soap that's available wor worldwide. But my artisan soap of the year goes to Reef Point Soaps Test Depth. So I've had this soap for a while, and uh, Reef Point Soaps, first of all, the performance is incredible. Um, these are tallow-based soaps. Oh, sorry, it's stearic acid, then tallow. You get coconut oil in here, uh, castor oil, shea butter, glycerin, uh, more coconut oil, more castor oil, uh, and then just strips shea butter. And the performance is incredible. They work well with soft water, hard water. They're easy to lather, produce thick, creamy, slick uh, lathers that just leave a really nice post shave feel. And they have two scents I'm particularly passionate about. First of all, it's Earl Grey and Ginger, which you guys should check out. But my favorite from them has to be Test Depth. It's a really nice marine scent. You get your citrus, uh, vetiver, amber kind of overall. But then this is really evened out the scent in here. I had to look on their sites, mulberry and water lily that they add in there. And this does not smell floral to me. The mulberry doesn't make this smell sweet or fruity to me. I think that they just add a nice background to kind of even out what can be, you know, if you do it just a straight citrus vetiver, you know, vetiver has that pungent, grassy scent to it. And uh, citrus can smell bitter, but with that mulberry in the background and the water lily, it really evens it out. Clean, fresh, marine, male cologne scent. Love it, the performance is awesome. I love their packaging here. You get these navy blue uh, tubs here. And it's reef point, so you get all these like Poseidon tridents on here. Some like these navy stars. These come out of Maryland, so they definitely have a, uh, there's gotta be some sort of navy background here, these soaps, but reef point soaps, excellent performers, excellent scent, and these absolutely deserve uh, shaving soap of the year. So now going to a more manufactured shaving soap. This one goes to Tabac. So Tabac is another controversial soap. Uh, first of all, the performance, I don't think that that's very controversial. Uh, if you know how to lather up a soap, this will work. It's tallow based. You're going to get that all that tallow performance in there. Easy to make a lather with. Creamy, luxurious feel on your face. Good slickness. The post shave on here isn't as good as Reef Point. Uh, I find this to be a little bit drying, but what overpowers that somewhat negative for this soap is the scent. And this is where Tabac comes controversial. The scent on here is you hate it or you love it. It is a strong scent. If, you know, when you, some people grade uh, shaving soap scents have their overall uh, scent strength, one out of five or one out of ten, this can be top of the list every time. This stuff, it has so much scent in there, which I really do like. You know, sometimes I like a strongly scented soap. It really gives you that full experience when you're using it. You know what you're using, you're smelling it throughout the shave. And for me, Tabac is a very pleasing scent. It's a classic shaving scent. And Tabac, as the name implies, it's based in tobacco, oak moss, vanilla. So you get those like rich pungentness of the tobacco in there. 
But then it's evened out. In the background, there's some lavender and some bergamot and aroli, which are some citrus scents, which really help give it a more pleasing scent overall. But you still get that tobacco vanilla kick in here. And this stuff, so I have it here in the refill pocket. Comes nicely, you know, a little golden package in here. And I don't know, this just smells like a classic shaving scent to me. You know, I could picture someone shaving with this a hundred years ago, and I think this will always be a classic scent that people will love. Some people shave with tobacco exclusively. That's how passionate they are about it. That's not me, but I do love this, and it's one of the best performers out there on the mass market. So my more production shaving soap of the year goes to tobacco. All right, now we're getting to aftershaves. So I have two different aftershaves here. I have a more production one and then a more artisan one. And we'll start off with the artisan one. And that goes to Fine Fresh Vetiver. So I post on Instagram my shaving uh, gear of the year. I use this bottle, but this one was obviously empty. And I've re-upped here. And you can see how much I've used in the past two and a half, three months. This has become, I wear this as honestly a cologne every day. I love this. You know, I'll shave in the morning. Put this on as my aftershave and I'll put a little bit more on my neck, down my chest, and this is what I wear as a cologne. I love this scent. Um, it's modeled after Tom Ford's Grey Vetiver, so if you guys have ever used that or if you're at a department store and want to smell that, it smells like this. But it's fr the fresh vetiver scent, and so you start off with that grassy, I don't know, it's just got, it's got some kick to it, the vetiver in there, and it's excellent. And it's they described on their website, you also get the smell of ozone and concrete and metal. I agree with that. This is, this is a manly scent. You know, this would smell weird if a female was wearing this to me. Uh, but it's just got that great vetiver kick, uh, poignantness of vetiver. It, the background in here just really pushes the vetiver forward. This is a very vetiver forward scent. If you like vetiver, check this stuff out. Absolutely. You don't get as much of the grassiness because of the ozone in there and like that metal. I'm not sure exactly what they use to create that. This is just a strong vetiver. And I love fine. Their ingredient list is awesome. Uh, it says it on the front of here. Ingredient list. Alcohol, water, fragrance, and menthol. Awesome. I also like the menthol in here. It gives you a nice cooling. It's not crazy amount of menthol. Just a little bit so on your face you just feel a little cooled off when you put on it. Like I said, I apply it down here on my chest so I'm going to wear it as a cologne for the day. Just provides a nice cooling sensation, and I love this. Fresh vetiver, this is one of my absolute favorite scents out there on the market. Finally, last product of the year for 2017 goes out to Parasso. So this is the more production aftershave. This is the green. You can see it down here in the bottom. I need to order more. Uh, so they don't call it aftershave, so if you're searching for it, you can see they call it aftershave toning lotion, but just an alcohol-based aftershave. This is their green scent, so you get the eucalyptus and menthol. This is great. You know, if you want to pair this with a cologne, I don't feel like the scent of this is overpowering at all. It's just a great aftershave. I like the alcohol-based aftershaves that are out there. Put this on, acts as a stringent on your skin, cleans it up, and then you get that the menthol. A little bit of cooling again. There's some glycerin, witch hazel in here, which are both uh, anti-inflammatory and hydrating to your skin. And then you have the eucalyptus, it's just that little bit of fresh scent there on your face. Like I said, because it's a simple scent with just the eucalyptus, I don't feel like it interferes with other scents if, you're gonna be, if you want to wear a different cologne or a scented deodorant. Um, but your face just smells fresh and I, you know, I picked this up because you know, I didn't really have that high expectations for it. I was like, no, it's just something I should try. You can see I've just plowed through this bottle. I love it. It's a nice daily driver if you're just looking for something simple to throw on your skin after you shave. Prasso, love this stuff. Anyway, so that is my shave gear of the year for 2017. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. These are products that I love, that I stand behind, absolutely. I really appreciate the performance and the price point these come in at. All of these products, none of these are overly expensive. I think the most expensive product here is the Razor Rock shaving brush. That's only like 60, 70 bucks. Not that much. Um, but all of these, you know, if you're getting into wet shaving, honestly, the Rockwell would be a great first shaving brush. You could get the synthetic Sterling or the Samogue. You could pick up Reef Point soaps and either a fine or Prasso aftershave, and you'd be great. You'd be good to go. Those would be excellent products. I could serve you not just as good beginner products, 
but products you could appreciate as your shaving experience increases. Maybe you're looking for different things. These are not products that you will outgrow. And I think that's really important. When you're getting to any hobby, I have a lot of hobbies. Shaving is one of my main hobbies, but there's a lot of things I do, and I really do believe in, if you're gonna start a new hobby, don't go out there and buy the Cadillac of everything, but don't buy the entry level first thing, you know, that's just cheap and available, because you want stuff that's gonna give you a good experience through the quality of the products, and you also want something that, you know, you can keep around. You don't want something that, you know, a year from now you're like, nah, I wanna get rid of this, and I don't think any of these, I. I will never get rid of any of these, and if you got any of these as starter gear, I would highly recommend them, especially the Rockwell. I think that that's particularly of interest here. It's $50. If you're going to invest, you're a new guy getting into the hobby, I think the Rockwell is a fantastic razor. With the adjustability in there of 1 to 6, it's something you could start very mild 1 and then start bringing it up. It's only $50. And if you're going to invest in a good first product, if you're, you know, I think the one thing not to skimp on if you're getting into wet shaving is the razor. Because if you get a bad razor that shaves like crap, you're going to cut yourself, you're not going to have a good shaving experience, and you're going to turn right away from wet shaving and go back to your old cartridge gel ways, which I don't recommend. This is a great way to shave. I think it'll give you your best, most irritation-free, closest shaves possible. And, uh, you know, this would be a great first product to invest in. 50 bucks, but... It's incredible. I love it. It's one of my favorite razors of all time. I know Busta puts it as number two right behind his 34C. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for your patience, and there will be a lot more shave videos to come. Thank you for watching.